Hello and welcome to a new video about coils. Well, actually, we're talking about the magnetic field, right? This is where we started from, but we're now we're talking about coils. And last time we talked about how we're turning on and off a coil, and then we realized, aha, uh -huh, there's something happening, especially when turning off a coil. Because I have again drawn this situation in here. We said, okay, there's a coil, there is an, an, an initial current running through, and then I switch it off. This is the task we have to do. We want to switch off a coil, right? And I said we can think about an additional RA, an additional resistance, which is only imaginable. Yeah? If it is only imaginary, imaginary, yeah? it's imaginable, yeah? and it's imaginary. Uh, so we can think about that there we are not switching off, we are switching to a resistance. Yeah? Because then we are enabling the issues that the current through the coil cannot change. The coil is driving the current. All right? The magnetic field, the energy inside the magnet, stored inside the magnetic field of the coil is driving the current and this will not change. So we need to have some construct, yeah, what we can think, how, that, that we can deal with this. And the, the idea is that we have here an additional RA. So with, with node switch off, we switch to an additional RA. So the current will go up here yeah, and will produce a switching off UO, I call it UO for off uh, uh, voltage here. And what is the maximum value of this UO? Uh, the maximum value of this UO is RA multiplied by I. Uh, because this I is going through and RA is the value. And now, if we read really switching off, all right, so if RA is really high, you see what is happening. This I is constant, it will not change because this is the die in the coil, so this will not change. Multiplied by a big value will be, will be a big voltage. And this is exactly the issue that we have a big, 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 big voltage there yeah, when switching off a coil. So usually here are sparks and the sparks will destroy the, 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 the contacts and so on. Not that good. So we have sometimes it's used. I said like like if you want to have a spark, yeah, then this, this stuff can be used. Yeah? But usually we don't want to have this. Yeah? Usually the task is switching off at the coil smooth. And I want to show you different methods here I have drawn them, how to deal with this. Yeah? And now I explain what is behind those methods. Free wheel diode. This is the first method, easy method, often used when switching off relays, for instance, coil of relays. Uh, free wheel diodes, just put in a diode, a diode is an element which will only be conductible in one direction. This time, in this direction, current can only go from down to up. From up to down, it's, it's blocked. It's acting like a non-return valve. Okay, non-return valve for current, in this direction yes, in this direction no. Right? So if we have just the voltage in there, there will nothing pass down here, because it's, in, it's blocked, yeah? blocking direction. But if we turn off, the voltage, the, the, the current can be driven, it can get smaller over time and disappear. Cool method, huh? Cool method. And it is indeed... Yeah, all right here, the positive sides of this method. It is indeed a simple and cheap, simple and cheap solution. This is good. If something is simple and cheap, use it. There is also a minus side, a downside, and this minus side is it's not suitable for for sensitive electronics. Okay. Not suitable for sensitive electronics. This is because simply it takes a while. We have some peaks until this is getting uh, conductive. All right. We have a short and this short. Maybe already leads to the fact that some electronics oh, die. Hmm? 
Another method is a capacitor. So current is going through, current is charging capacitor. When turned off, current is charging capacitor, capacitor voltage is going up. Yeah, will stop the current from, from drowning, <laughs> from going down, and this will slowly disappear. Yeah? Also looking good. Also looking good. And I tell you what, it's simple. Huh? A good solution is simple. So this might fit it. Yeah? However, in reality it's the case that this is charging the, the, the capacitor. The capacitor is then issuing a current here. The current is again charging the capacitor. The capacitor is again issuing a current here. So we have swingings. They will disappear over time, but they will, in the start they will swing and then they will go down. So there will be swinging. Yeah? Swinging. This is happening. So why not just use a resistor? Why not just use a parallel resistor? Because then the current can disappear. <laughs> Simple. But the bad thing is that in this direction there will also be current. Uh, and I cannot use a very high resistance because then I again have high voltages. So I have to balance this resistance. Uh, so actually it's also a simple solution. Uh, however, I have I have a power drain. This thing is getting hot, yeah? just by sitting there. Yeah? I have a constant power drain. Then, instead of a resistor, I can use a so-called varistor. A varistor is an element which is blocking. Yeah? There is no current passing through. Until the voltage has reached a certain level, yeah? then suddenly it's getting conductive. Yeah? It's like over voltage protection. Yeah? If the voltage has reached a certain level, poof, it will be conductive. Yeah? And if it's dropping again under this level, it will block again. Yeah? So it's like a valve which is, which is acting on, on the level of stress, yeah? on the level of, of voltage there. Yeah? This is also a semiconductor material. This sounds promising, right? Because in usual, when there is low voltage in usual operation, this will block. And if there is a higher voltage, we can turn off and we can let lead the, the current. Hmm? Woo! Yeah? And this is even robust. These things, they can withstand high currents. Yeah? And they can also uh, uh, withstand higher voltages. Sounds promising, right? Maybe it's not as cheap as those things here, but it's also not too expensive. So where is the where is the downside? Huh? Aging. It's aging. The thing is aging. It's getting old. It's like in life. Aging is the not the downside, but here is the downside. <laughs> aging is the downside of this stuff here. Yeah. Okay, so this is getting old. This is a power train here for seeing. Here I cannot protect my sensitive electronics, but this is looking really promising. So they developed the so-called suppressor diode. Yeah. This is especially designed for exactly this purpose. Yeah. And com compared to this variant, they have really short, short time. To react. So they are really fast. Yeah? They're, they're really getting conductive. Back, yeah? And so we are not getting a slightest peak. Yeah? So the, the, those things are also able to, to, to protect sensitive electronics. They are, they can, they, they can do everything. And if you have a perfect solution for something, yeah, what this solution usually is, yeah. The best solution is usually expensive. Mm -hmm. 
So depending on the situation, choose. All right. That's the usual usual things are this. Yeah. If you have uh, if you have higher voltages, use this. Yeah. If you have uh, uh, sensitive electronics, use this. Yeah? Sensitive electronics at higher voltages, well, it's usually no combinations which team up. All right, so this is how we can handle turning off a coil with keeping the peak, the, the, the voltage peak to a comfortable level. And actually, that's everything I want to tell you about magnetic fields and the usage of magnetic fields. So I think we have heard enough yeah? how magnetic fields and electric fields interact to each other, why there's magnetism, why there's electricism, elect electrics, <laughs> and why those things are webbed together. Yeah? And then an application of this stuff, the coil, we also talked a lot about. Yeah? For me, this topic is, is done. Next topic I want to talk about is alternating current. Up to now, we only had currents which or voltages which stayed, which are well leveled. Okay, they have the same value. Maybe we switched okay from zero to something or from something to something, and but actually then they were stable. Then we always said after longer time and stuff. Huh? This is direct current. This is called direct current, so we deal with direct current now. Next series of videos dealing with alternating current, current which is, con which is constantly changing, currents and voltages. Mm -hmm. There's a series of videos about this. You don't have to watch it. Watch it. Uh, I would recommend huh? for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.